Aloha and welcome to the Kupuna Wiki Radio Show. This month we are talking about Kupuna services and in studio we have Scott Spolina who is a Senior Deputy, Deputy Prosecuting Attorney of the Elder Abuse Justice Unit. Kupuna Wiki is Hawaii's senior resource. We talk to the best local professionals in the state regarding topics such as real estate, senior housing, estate planning, finance, and health so that our Kupuna families can find the best resources in the midst of a life transition. We strive to make sure our seniors are informed and supported every step of the way. Thanks for joining us again today. I'm Brandon Lau. And I'm Andrew Leon. Your host for the Kapuna Wiki Radio Show. Our title sponsor for today is Cheney Brooks Choice Advisors, providing you with the best real estate information so you can make the most informed decisions. As they like to say, real estate is about choice. To contact them, call 808-753-9033. And now we have our real estate tip of the week brought to you by Cheney Brooks Choice Advisors. When planning for the long term, outgoing design styles in your home may negatively impact the desirability and price for your home. Home sale. Do you have popcorn ceilings, avocado green and harvest gold carpets, decor of the 70s, vertical blinds or matching pastel window uh, balances of the 80s, Hollywood mirror bathroom lights of the 1990s, old naughty pine cabinets or heavy Tuscan style kitchens of the early 2000s? Well, these are some of today's major outgoing design styles. Contact us at the Choice Group for more information about updating your home and marketing preparations for the future sale of your home. For more information about how you prepare your home for the market, contact Cheney Brooks Choice Advisors at 753-9033. Well, Andrew, I gotta say, um, I think Avocado Green is coming back in. It, it might, yeah. In different ways. In different ways, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, today on the show, we have Scott Spolina, Senior Deputy Prosecuting Attorney of the Elder Abuse Justice Unit. Welcome, Scott. Hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> well, you know, we are so intrigued about this topic on um, elder abuse. Uh, it's something that my family has dealt with personally and many others, uh, unfortunately. And it sounds like it's kind of this growing trend. And we're so glad that there's somebody like you helping to curb the tide. You know, I'd be surprised if anybody does not know somebody affected by elder abuse these days. Uh, right now, we're looking at a 13-year high with respect to crimes. In our last quarter, we broke a new record um, to where now our crimes are outpacing that of our sex assault unit and our domestic violence unit. Um, the numbers are just going through the roof, and so that's why I appreciate this show to let me uh, share some knowledge to your listeners on how to not to become a victim of elder abuse. Right. Well, maybe you can start off, Scott. Um, first of all, for those who may not have heard you before, maybe you can give us a little background about yourself professionally and, and what do you love about this position? Okay. Um, again, my name is Scott Spalina. I'm with the prosecutor's office and I handle all the crimes involving seniors. Um, and we define seniors as 60 and over on the island of Oahu. I've been with the prosecutor's office since 95, uh, 1995. About the first uh, 12 to 13 years, I was in charge of the domestic violence unit. Mm -hmm. And then then prosecuting attorney Peter Carlisle asked me to create the elder abuse unit. Mm -hmm. Before, we did not have. Uh, there was no elder abuse unit in the state of Hawaii. So I created the very first one, wow. and we've become very successful in the sense that now, <laughs> now we have too many cases. Right. Right? We have a lot of cases. It first started with just me mm -hmm. and a secretary. Wow. And now it's me and three other attorneys. We have three interns, we have investigators, we have a paralegal, and we still need more support because as our population has grown, so is the number of victims that we're seeing. Well, statistically, um, you know, it's not good that these things have grown, but I'm really glad that your office has grown to handle all of these it, it, problems. It has. <laughs> I don't think it's grown enough, and yeah. I tell my supervisor that I need another person, at least another person, to handle the influx because daily... Um, you guys were making fun of my pager that, <laughs> that I carry. Uh, the it's government issued. Government issued. Uh, the, police, yeah, the police department pager because we are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And this pager is constantly going off. Additionally, um, I get calls from the public daily as well. There's a, a crime wave happening mm. and attention needs to be had to um, adjust to it. Now, Scott, if I'm doing the math correct, it's been 24 years. Something must motivate you to do this. What oh is my it? Gosh. Um, anger. 
<laughs> uh, okay. That's a good motivating factor. Uh, I still find myself being upset. Mm. Uh, I still find myself, uh, in fact, I had a case this morning that came in um, that it was this caregiver and her boyfriend who had taken the credit card of their patient who had rec recently been deceased oh. and, and ran up $16,000 in it. Wow. And they captured uh, the boyfriend on video at Dia, or I guess Don Quixote you now, mm -hmm. um, using it. And he made a, a statement saying, "Oh yeah, well they owed us money." And so he's trying to justify the behavior. And and um, my girlfriend, who's the caregiver, she had bills to pay. But if you look at what they're buying, they went to Armani, they went to Perfumia, they went to all these luxury items there, right. not not paying household bills. And then say, how much money do you think that she was owed? Oh, like two thousand dollars. Then why run up sixteen thousand dollars in credit card debt? Yeah. So, it's stuff like that that still gets me angry. That right. still gets me angry to where it's like, okay, I want to get these people, and so I will put the extra time in. Um, fortunately, I'm very lucky in that my wife, um, she's a social worker, mm -hmm. and her specialty is gerontology. Oh, and. I'm also, and you know her from being a mobile notary as well, mm -hmm. um, but she's very supportive of my efforts. Right. So when I come home at 10 o'clock at night, she knows that it's because crime is happening to seniors, and oh, she wow. supports everything that we can do to stop that. And you mentioned you get calls or buzzes on that pager every day. Every day. Right. Uh, I mean, I just came from the main station uh, today because someone... My, my pet peeve right now is that people are leaving their car keys in their car. Oh. <laughs> and I have so many victims, and that's what happened last night. Someone left their keys in the car, and it got stolen, and now they have to call the police. And then I get paged and all that. And I swear to goodness, the last four weeks, I've had at least one person who left their keys in the car, and actually the car's unlocked as well. Oh. Um, I just wish they, they should just put out a welcome mat to the criminal. Here, 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 here's a welcome mat. Take my car, please. And then when they do that, don't call the police. Just, right. Yeah, just leave me alone. Leave me out of it. But the, the, we get the victims that need exactly. to be educated. Well, unfortunately, Kupuna are, some people would say, easy victims to target. Um, and tell us, who does, who does your office service? What qualifies them to call your office? Well, I mean, it would not be so much the Kapuna giving us our office a call specifically, but once the police investigate a case, mm -hmm. then the police call me up there. Um, sometimes we do give advice to callers, um, like if they feel that they've won the lottery, <laughs> they'll give me a call and say, is this really true? Because they want to share it with you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they don't want to do that. <laughs> they just want to see if it's uh, uh, accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, that's one of the first calls we got like 13 years ago was someone complaining that they did not get their money from the Canadian lottery. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing. <laughs> I, neither did I. Well, you don't know it because it's a secret lottery. Oh, okay. That, he explained it's a secret lottery that no one knows about, but he won it. Because oh, someone on the telephone told him he won it. Right. And so he was complaining because he hadn't received his $2 million, even though he'd sent away, even though he sent them $15,000 oh, in taxes. No. Um, so in Texas, you said? Taxes. Oh, taxes. Yeah, oh, that, okay. that's what they, oh, um, so, so, so we get calls like that all the mm -hmm. time, actually. Uh, if you could give us maybe your top handful of the types of, these cases they receive, what would you say those are? Right now we're seeing an increase in the criminal gypsy type of confidence schemes. What is that? Um, basically where you have people just knocking on the front door mm -hmm. um, offering services. Um, offering like, oh I can cut your tree, mango tree, I can build your brick wall, I can <laughs> um, help with the roof, it looks like it's about to fall down. Or they'll stop people in the street mm -hmm. um, saying, oh your car, it's sparking. Yeah. Um, so those type of things. They'll approach um, people in the parking lot. Um, big box parking lots right. are the hunting ground of the modern criminal. Now. No kidding. Mm. And especially if you go to like Costco, we've had so many purse thefts from mm. Costco. Um, if you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, you'll be approached by people saying, hey, you installing that, you need help. I'm, I'm between jobs, I just finished a job at the Trump Hotel, I can help you out. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually this job costs $10,000, I can give it to you for $200. And I mean, so they're good at talking and right. saying, oh wow, this sounds too good to be true. So right. they'll offer their services. So we're seeing an increase in those type of scams going on there. Mm -hmm. Or your unlicensed contractor scam, where in Hawaii, 
it's common to pay somebody cash only for a job <laughs> thinking, oh, I'm getting one good deal and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't come with the protections of hiring somebody that is licensed and bonded. Right. And then they call me up later on saying, oh, I lost, uh, well, right now the biggest one I had was like $400,000. Oh. Um, um, $400,000, and it's usually the adult children that mm -hmm. discover it right. because the parents don't want to admit mm -hmm. that they um, were snookered. They don't right. want to admit that they were conned out of this much money. And so in that case, the adult daughter called me from the mainland because she discovered that her dad was paying for repairs on this house of excess of $400,000 um, because these, these criminal gypsies kept on coming there and juicing the bill, juicing the bill, and, and befriended this old man, gave him plate lunches every other day. So he did not want to call the police because they're my friends. Yeah. They're my friends. And so, so we get a lot of those heartbreaking uh, so those are criminal gypsies. Criminal gypsies, uh, that's a big one there. Uh, we get a ton of uh, mail theft. Um, people mail, mailbox. Mail theft. No, okay. people going into oh. the mailboxes, mailboxes right. and stealing the mail. Right. And we get a lot of the seniors that are still using, um, like they'll put the payments for utilities mm -hmm. into the mailbox and then put right. the red flag up. And that red flag tells the criminals, hey, there's a check in there. Yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> then the checks get stolen, they get washed at the bank. So we're seeing a lot of that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of checkbooks being stolen. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're seeing a, a trend in burglaries mm -hmm. where that's what they're looking for. They're looking for not the big TVs anymore. You rarely see criminals carrying out big TVs now. Right. They're going after the small um, items that have personal information whether it be the passports, checkbooks, bank books, uh, credit cards. Those or identity things. theft. Identity theft, mm -hmm. and just to simply, if you lose your checkbook, w you'll see a spike in the number of checks being written, and they'll, they'll like give out their f checks to their friends, the homeless or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, go, you go, I'll write down $300, you can keep $100, I get $200. And so they'll like pay their friends or promise, them. yeah, and the friends will go in there and try to cash the checks. Sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. And so they have that down pat. Um, and, and we'll say, okay, this person here lost their checkbook and guarantee in that week there'll be multiple checks at multiple banking institutions being uh, trying to be uttered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How's about um, online type of scams? I mean, I know we're talking about specifically Kupuna, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them are very accustomed to buying things online. Exactly, exactly. Online. What kinds of things are you seeing there? Well, I mean, you have your typical, like, phishing, where basically you, you're solicited saying, oh, your, your account's being tampered with, log in, and do those kind of security checks and everything. But one thing we're seeing with respect to online is what's called sweetheart swindles, mm -hmm. where you get seniors that are often lonely because okay. they may out, um, live their spouse or whatever, and they've seen commercials on TV about Match.com or eHarmony or like that. And say, I'm going to try it. I'm going to put myself out there on the World Wide Web and see what happens. And sure enough, they attract scam artists. Um, and we've had this one lady lose $120,000 um, over in Salt Lake because she fell in love, um, or she thought she was in love with a stranger that she'd never met before, okay. but had romanced her. Um, and they have stories about how successful they are, they live in another country and they can't wait to move to Hawaii and marry them or be their companion mm -hmm. or whatever. Unfortunately, they ran into some financial difficulty. Mm. And, and so they send them money? They send them money. Wow. Um, and so everybody has a sob story. Mm -hmm. Everybody, these, these scam artists, and, and a, a lot of people, a lot of my victims, mm -hmm. um, probably a lot of your listeners are thinking like, who would do this? Right. I mean, who would, I mean, don't they have any shame? They have no shame, first of all, <laughs> right. and they are professional criminals. Right. These are not crimes of opportunity where they just see like um, something on a counter and they just snatch it and walk away. Mm -hmm. They, Their job, their 60 hour a week job is trying to rip off people. And just like how you are very good at your business mm -hmm. um, because you've been, been doing it for a number of years, you right. know what works and what doesn't work. Right. Criminals are the same way. Their job is to steal from seniors. Mm -hmm. So they know what to say. They know what not to say. And, and to it, them, you're just the mark. They're just a mark. Yeah. And there's no guilt involved. Right. Because 
we've had criminals say like, "We can afford it. You're American. You can afford it." Oh, and they justify it. They yeah. everybody can justify it. Mm -hmm. That's one of the heartbreaking things about the financial crimes that we deal with, mm -hmm. because the majority of people that steal from seniors are their adult children, wow. cool. and they justify it. Yeah. They say, "Oh well, I was going to get it when mom and dad died, anyways. So I'm going to just take it now." Um, oh, I'm a good son. I help out around the house. I take out the garbage. So I need that $20,000. Yeah, I can't tell you how often I've heard those types of things. And Scott, I want you to enlighten us more okay. on elder abuse, not necessarily from strangers, but perhaps those that are more familiar. Mm -hmm. And also what you would recommend as far as how to prevent elder abuse for yourself and your family members. Very so good. we'll talk more about that right after this commercial break. <laughs> it was a delay. <laughs> wow. Oh, was, wow, this is uh, a yeah. gypsy criminal. That is you know, so interesting. There's so many families out yeah. there. Sweetheart swindled. I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only thing you can really do is, well, if I'm the son of person who could be abused mm -hmm. or taken advantage of. I mean, well, I mean put, a, put a camera outside? That, that, well, or? cameras help, but we encourage adult children to visit their parents, yeah, know what's going on, right. because there's a lot, there's a grooming process that happens, because the parents aren't going to automatically give them $10,000 for day one. There's a grooming process yeah. that goes on. Relationship building. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we have uh, Scott Spolina. He's the Senior Deputy Prosecuting Attorney of the Elder Abuse Justice Unit. And uh, in the first uh, first segment, uh, we kind of just went over uh, some stats um, and some of the common um, common uh, crimes that, that happen within you know your unit. Um, but I, I'm, I must say I was very surprised by the stat that you said that uh, uh, elder abuse is uh, more than you know the other crimes out there like you said uh, sex abuse right. um, emotional, uh, emotional abuse, abuse yeah. uh, physical and so abuse I'm, I'm not surprised I mean you know we have that aging population mm -hmm. um, it's only getting bigger and so um, it's only going to continue and uh, so you know I wanted to touch upon um, you know what are some signs um, that uh, you know families can can look out for or you know, be aware of that would indicate, well, this, you know, this could possibly be something. Yeah, well, I mean, one thing that people um, have to realize is that seniors, they're creatures of habit uh, for the most part. And so when you find that your parents or grandparents are changing their routine, there's a reason to change the routine. If suddenly they stop going to, let's say, church, or they stop going to visit, or they stop going to parties, Something's going on there, and it could just be that they're slowing down a little bit, but also could be maybe the caregiver, whether it be someone they hire, whether it be a trusted neighbor, whether it be a son or daughter, maybe they're starting to isolate that person mm -hmm. and isolate them from the rest of the family. And that's one of the things you see in a lot of these scams with seniors is you want to isolate them from help, from another person they can talk to. One of the common things, you, uh, we talked a little bit about the uh, lottery scams earlier. One of the common things that victims are told if they so-called won the lottery is don't tell anybody you won the lottery. Hmm. Because that will bring attention to it and then, I'll, and then um, the person will be told, no, you really didn't win the lottery. So a lot of the scams that we see with seniors, it's a secretive crime. Mm -hmm. And so don't tell this, don't tell that person that you did this, don't tell mom and dad that you do this. Now. Hawaii is a very, very expensive place to live, and it's a very expensive place to grow old. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't, they, they think that they're going to live to be 112 years old and die in their sleep, mm -hmm. but be in good health prior to that. Whereas that's not the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is that there's a decrease in your independence. Mm -hmm. um, you get sicker. You may, some people might end up in a facility. Some people might need care. 
a lot of people do not plan for that. And so what happens when your mom or dad has a stroke, when your mom or dad has a heart attack, your mom or dad has fallen down and broken their hip, that puts a tremendous strain on the family and the family, if they're not financially or emotionally prepared for that, they start making bad decisions. Mm -hmm. um, you might have one sibling trying to be the superhero sibling, saying, I'll take care of mom, I'll take care of mom. And I'll quit my job, I'll do, I'll just live with that. And they think that they can do that, but it's a tremendous stress mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just a job nine to five, because you're living there. Mm -hmm. So it's a lifestyle. And unfortunately, that caregiver stress can either um, manifest itself in physical abuse. So mm -hmm. one of my first cases was this son who moved back from the mainland. He left his wife. Um, he said temporarily take care of my dad because he's a bed bound and stuff like that. And he, for like two years, he supposedly was the greatest son in the world. But then the dad soiled his diaper one day and the son just had enough and just mm -hmm. snapped and started beating his son, be uh, beating the dad, beating the dad. Mm -hmm. And um, dislocated the eyeball, one of the eyeballs, like mm -hmm. um, a detached retina kind. And you just don't know how stress can affect the caregiver. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's always good to plan, and it's always good to even um, taking shifts. I mean, if you if you see that your sibling is one of those people that caregive, volunteer to help out. You cannot do it by yourself. No matter how strong-willed you think you are, how tough, I can take care of mom, I can take <laughs> care of dad. This is not something that you take care of. This is something that you need to think about. You need to nurture um, mm -hmm. because you're dealing with someone that's helpless. Yeah. And so we see um, and we counsel people with like getting help if needed there. Um, most of our, going back to your original question of um, some of the warning signs, is again, if you find that they're communicating with somebody, um, that you know, why are you spending so much time with the neighbor? Why is the neighbor coming over all the time? Mm -hmm. um, we had this one adult daughter find out that her dad had married a bar girl. Um, <laughs> surprise, and, surprise. Yeah, every weekend he'd go to this one bar um, after golf with his buddies, and then she came one uh, to help with the bill, go through all the junk mail, and stuff like that, and say, Dad, why are you paying, whose apartment's this? Why are you paying the mortgage on the apartment? Why are you paying the car payments on it? Oh, that's my wife. And it was like a green card kind of thing. I mean, they never slept together, right, and stuff right, like right, that, right. but um, this bar girl was using because again, we're all social creatures right. and people like companionship. I had this other adult daughter. I mean, all the, all the adult daughters, they're really good. They give me a yeah. call, they're very upset. <laughs> they, they're telling me that, um, he said, she said, Scott, um, it's cheaper for me to take my dad to a hostess bar um, than to have this one caregiver come over. Because whenever this caregiver comes over, she has a sob story and then my dad writes her a check for like a thousand dollars. So again, you have caregivers that play the fiddle, play the sad song, and take advantage of um, the seniors. And you might say, well, Scott, well, how come then they just don't go to a, a legitimate care place that has the people come in all the time? And um, we have a lot of crimes from those because even though it's a legitimate place, they have to hire all these people, and it's strong as the weakest link, and you get one of those people that steal the jewelry. There's right. one caregiver from a legitimate place, stole all the wife's jewelry, because the husband was in one bedroom, and the mm -hmm. wife had to go shopping. And so it, it's very difficult, um, but you also you need the help sometimes. So Scott, I know in that first part we talked about um, financial scams mm -hmm. or financial abuse from strangers, kind of talked a little bit about what happens in a close-knit caregiver situation. Uh, also family, right, when family yeah, gets yeah. involved, I mean, uh, but what are some ways that we can prevent these kind of abusive arrangements from taking place? Well, and this is, uh, and I wish I had the, the, the perfect answer, because yeah. this, this kills me, because you have the senior who's oftentimes their own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. They have the right to their own money, and they have the right to spend it any way they want to. So if they truly believe that they're going to win the lottery, they're going to keep on giving the money. And we've had family take away their phone, and they get another phone, and they call up the people. Um, and they're just being preyed on constantly. So you might say, well, I'm just going to take all of mom's and dad's money away from them. That's called theft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, they they so think they're helping them, but in essence, they're 
Yeah, uh, because if the senior has the mental capacity to make their own decisions, but then are just foolish with their money, they have the legal right to be foolish with their money. And, and you can talk to them blue in the face, and I know this firsthand because my mother-in-law, she fall, has fallen for so many scams. She almost lost her house because oh, no. she wasn't paying ta uh, wasn't paying mortgage for like two years wow. because she fell in with the, they're called the sovereign citizen movement and oh. she fell in, uh, with those people there mm. and I talked blue in the face to try to say you need to do this you need to right. do this. no you don't know but okay so you're gonna you're gonna believe the stranger that wants your money over your son-in-law who's in charge of elder abuse. It's a test of credibility there. It's a test of credibility there. So going back to how can we protect seniors from themselves, um, their irrevocable trust. Mm -hmm. They're like maybe you can put the entire principal into a trust that they can't drain instantly, but maybe get an allowance. Um, so do estate planning, uh, set up trust mm -hmm. to where they just can't one day withdraw all their money. Right, that's a, that's a really good tip. You know, Scott, I just wish we could go through more scenarios. <laughs> it's, just, it's so good to hear this information, but uh, where can you point our listeners to to get more information on, and resources regarding what you do? Well, I mean, it's easy just to Google elder right. abuse in Hawaii, okay. and then our website will come up. Our okay. prosecutor's website will come up. Mm -hmm. Also, um, we have, I, before I get to my emails, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I get like up to upwards of like 20 calls a day. Um, and I'm in court in the morning, and so sometimes, sometimes I'm calling people back at like 7, 8 o'clock at night, and they think that I'm a scam caller, and I call, <laughs> call them back at night. But my direct email is elderabuse, all one word, mm -hmm. at honolulu.gov, G-O-V. G -O -V. And that goes to your office. That goes directly to me. Oh. Um, and, then, and then our phone number mm -hmm. is 808-768-7536. Um, mm -hmm. um, Scott, well, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, this is just a wealth of knowledge and such a good topic, very timely in today's world. So Scott Spolina, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Coming up next, we have our Kapuna Wiki Classic Trivia.